In this lesson I'm going to show you a little bit more about the last report that I was working on. As you recall, we were working on a report here that was called AAA Sample Report. Now notice that this report is sitting in the model folder. That's important to know that because this is where we usually start working on our reports, is in our local model folder. Of course you do have to make sure that you don't put reports you're working on into a live project. Uh, that should be done by your project manager or the administrator. So do make sure that you get uh, permission to put your reports, uh, get them approved, and uh, make sure that they're valid reports and that they work correctly before they're available to other people. Okay, so I'm going to just go in with this report here. Because that report is in the model folder, we can now open the report and we can see it sitting there. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to run a test here to see if it works and we'll create a report listing each and every item in the model. Now the reason this uh, report is listing each and every item is because of the design of the initial uh, part property here. Uh, if I click on this part property twice and open it up, you'll see that the sort type is set to distinct. So this means it's going to pull each and every item and list it. Uh, the other thing that you should be aware of is that the name field that I have here, uh, if I open that up, you can see that it is set to sort ascending. Uh, it is very important to note that, as I mentioned last time, to uh, have at least one of your fields sorted uh, because if you don't, then it just seems that then nothing works properly. So I'm going to just make sure I drive that one home, that uh, you should have either the name field or the profile field or something sorted. So when I uh, go back to changing this field here from, say, distinct to combine, it will combine all like uh, fields that are in fact sorted here. So uh, when I go to run this report now after saving it, just uh, reduce this size here. Uh, we can go back now, run that report on everything, and we'll see that we have a smaller list. Now, in talking about model checking, one of the first things that you'd want to look at with model checking would be whether you have consistency in your naming. Now, right away, I see two things here that uh, draw my attention. One is the name Anchor Rod and Anchor Space Rod. In addition to that, I have some, obviously here, BP1s, base plates, that don't have any name at all. So we would want to be able to find those items in the model and later on uh, change their names or give them a name. So in order to do that, we would need to do some additional work on this report here. Now one of the interesting things we can do with these reports is make them interactive. And one way to do that it's very simple, is we apply a text note here called the ID, call it ID marker or uh, ID uh, text, and uh, we're just going to place that right there. Then uh, we're going to go and grab a value field here and uh, place that right here. And the value that we're going to pull from the part attributes is going to be the ID and if I scroll down here, I'll find the identification number right there. So when I place that into here, it causes the report to become uh, what is called an interactive report. So uh, you'll see what I mean by that in a second. I want to just drag that over there, make sure that they are close to each other. I'll save that report, and now I'll proceed to run it. Now when I run this report, creating from all, you'll see that the ID number appears here and that each and every item now is separated out because each item does in fact have a separate ID number. Now to find uh, say the base plates that uh, we we don't know which ones they are all we have to do is click on the item in the report and you'll see items in the model light up become highlighted so there's one right there that we've located also all the anchor rods that have a space, um, we can highlight all of them right here and uh, proceed to change their names. 
So one way to do that would be to open up the properties of the uh, anchor rod of one of them, like so. And we would want to change that to anchor space rod, like so. Uh, in order to do that now, we would go back in here and highlight them all, deselect everything except the word anchor rod, and then modify. Now with that in mind, uh, we would now rerun the report to see if that worked. And go here, run the report, creating from all. And we see now that we have only anchor rods. Also to find the base plates, um, we could just highlight all three of these. So that um, explains just a little bit about how you can now add additional fields to these reports uh, to make them what is called interactive, which can then be used to uh, improve our checking methods. Uh, we are developing a series of new reports that uh, will be available early next year, we believe, and uh, those reports will have a lot of interaction. Uh, they'll be able to allow you to find things in the model. Um, there are other reports available. Uh, really all you have to do is uh, ask for them. Um, your administrator can create reports for you on demand. If, if time is available and if the report is uh, going to be a desirable one. So don't hesitate to give ideas. Um, they're very helpful. So that concludes today our short lesson on how to add an ID field to report and make it interactive and then use it to test for continuity uh, in your model. Thank you.